Africa, world's new breadbasket. Drones farming seaweed. Your salad, it's from the 50th floor. No, I'm not high. This is farming's fever dream come true. Buckle up, buttercup, because we're about to trip through the agri matrix. Oh, hello there, you chlorophyll crazed code farmers and digital dirt diggers. It's me, Theodore, your reluctant guide through the cyberpunk cornfields of tomorrow. Strap in because my caffeinated brain's about to take you on a joyride through agriculture's identity crisis. Today's menu? A three-course meal of cognitive dissonance with a side of what the actual heck. First up, Africa. Yeah, that Africa is flipping the script from starving to whole foods supplier. Then, we're diving into a world where drones are the new scarecrows and seaweed is the avocado toast of 2025. Oh, and your neighbor's high-rise? It's cosplaying as old McDonald's farm. So, sink those synapses, my jaded jungle gym geniuses. Whether you're a tech bro who thinks organic is a Spotify playlist, or an eco-warrior still composting your ex's love letters, this episode is your golden ticket to the Willy Wonka factory of food production. And yeah, this is episode whatever of our sustainable agriculture and blah 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 series, part of some bigger thing about global insights and new frontiers. Today, we're seeing how Silicon Valley decided to have a midlife crisis and buy a farm. Let's dive in and see if we can make sense of this agricultural acid trip before my brain decides to wander off and ponder the existential crisis of a GPS-guided tractor. Spoiler alert. Even the machines are questioning their purpose in life. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back. It's time for another deep dive, and this time we're tackling a topic that's been making headlines left and right. The future of food security in Africa. And from the looks of it, um, we've got a lot to unpack. We really do. I mean, just look at this stack of reports and announcements. We've got research from the University of Birmingham, statements from international organizations like APEC and the USDA, even a business perspective from KPMG. It's true. It seems like everyone's got something to say about the future of food on the African continent. All right. It's like the whole world is waking up to the importance of this issue. But um, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's uh, let's take a step back and acknowledge the elephant in the room. There are some very real challenges facing sub-Saharan Africa right now. Mm. I mean, one article from Science Daily really laid it all out. Climate change, infrastructure, access to technology, conflict. It's a lot. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely a complex landscape. And that sense of urgency really came through at the recent Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Meeting, APEC for short. Interesting. What were people saying there? Well, a lot of what was in those reports, you know, climate change is a huge concern. Everyone's talking about the need for climate smart agriculture, especially for those farmers who are, well, the most vulnerable to these changes. Yeah. It's a reminder that a thriving agricultural sector in Africa isn't just an African issue. It has global implications. Exactly. Food security is interconnected. What happens on one continent impacts us all. 100 percent. But here's the thing. Remember that Science Daily article I mentioned? Yeah. The one that kind of, you know, painted a pretty stark picture of the challenges. Yeah. Well, it doesn't stop there. It also highlights some pretty amazing assets that Africa has going for it. Abundant agricultural resources, incredible genetic diversity in crops and livestock. Right. And get this, a young and driven population, and they are ready to innovate. Welcome back to The Deep Dive. So we're not just talking about problems here. We're talking about a continent with vast untapped potential. Absolutely. And that's where organizations like the Africa Food Systems Forum or AFS Forum come in. They're laser focused on empowering Africa to take the lead in finding solutions for Africa. Have you had a chance to um, look at their six strategic objectives? I have. And one thing that really stood out to me was their focus on youth and women. Exactly. They're not just buzzwords either. They're recognizing that to create a sustainable future for food systems in Africa, you need fresh perspectives. And who better to provide those than the young people who are going to inherit this land? It's about looking ahead, not just trying to get by. I love that. They're not just thinking about surviving. They're thinking about thriving. So we've got all this yeah. potential, right? But how do we actually turn that potential 
into, well, food on the table? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? It really is. And thankfully, that Science Daily article had some answers. One big one that jumped out at me was diversifying food sources. Ah, yes. Spreading the risks, so to speak. Exactly. It's about helping these nations move away from relying on just a handful of crops or those expensive imports and, you know, embracing a wider range of options. Absolutely. Building a more resilient food system. And it's not just about what's being grown, but also who's calling the shots. Empowering local farmers, giving them more control over their land, their practices. That's huge. Huge. Yeah, it just makes sense. Who knows better what works in a specific region than the people who actually farm there? Oh, 100%. But, of course, we can't talk about the future of agriculture without talking about sustainability. And yeah. um, this is where things get really exciting for me. It's true. The buzz around sustainable solutions at APEC was, well, it was palpable. There's a real push for innovation and technology. Which, you know, can sound a little buzzwordy sometimes. Innovation, technology. Yeah. What does that actually look like on the ground? Okay, think about it this way. Drought-resistant crops, right, developed using cutting-edge genetic research. Or what about um, precision agriculture techniques? They use sensors and data to, like, optimize everything. Irrigation, fertilization, you name it. Okay, hold on. Back up for a second. Precision agriculture. That's a new one for me. Oh, it's fascinating. Yeah. Imagine a network of sensors spread out across a field. These sensors are constantly monitoring things like soil moisture, nutrient levels, and all that data. It gets beamed back to a central system, and then that system tells the farmer exactly where water or fertilizer is needed most. Wow, so no more guesswork. Exactly. Less waste, lower cost for farmers, and of course, it's much better for the environment. It's a win-win-win. Okay, that's amazing. It's like they're not just bringing African agriculture into the 21st century, they're launching it into the future. And speaking of bringing some serious resources to the table, did you see that announcement from the USDA? Oh, you mean the $466.5 million investment in food assistance and agricultural development? Yeah, that caught my eye. It's a hefty chunk of change. What I'm curious about is, like, where's that money actually going? Well, some of it's for immediate support, things like the McGovern Dole program. They provide vital food assistance to those who need it most, which is crucial, especially in the short term. Yeah. But there's also this long-term vision with initiatives like Food for Progress. And what's the goal there? It's all about strengthening those agricultural systems from the ground up building capacity within those communities so they can eventually feed themselves. So it's not just about handouts, it's about empowerment. You got it. Food for Progress, they focus on training farmers in those modern techniques, improving infrastructure so they can actually get their products to market, fostering trade relationships. It's a holistic approach. I like that. Thinking big picture. Yeah. Okay, now this next one might seem like we're going off on a tangent, but I swear it connects. It was about sustainable agriculture in the UAE. UAE. That's interesting. They're not exactly known for their lush farmland. That's what I thought. But they're doing some really innovative stuff. Hmm. Vertical farms, where they're growing crops in these stacked layers. Hydroponics, which uses nutrient-rich water instead of soil. They're even using artificial intelligence to monitor growing conditions. Wow. They're really pushing the boundaries, turning a challenge into an opportunity. Exactly. But the real takeaway for me, the thing that blew my mind, was that KPMG report actually made a business case for sustainable agriculture. That's smart. It goes beyond just the ethical reasons, although those are important too, don't get me wrong, but it speaks to a language everyone understands, the bottom line. Right. And what they found was that those sustainable practices, yeah, they might require some upfront investment, but they often lead to higher yields. They use less water, fewer fertilizers, and pesticides. Mm. So it's not just good for the planet. It's good for business. That's a powerful message. You know, all this talk about innovation and sustainable solutions, it, it reminds me of a couple of events that are coming up that I am so there for. Oh, yeah? Like what? Well, first up, you've got the Africa Food Systems Forum 2024 Summit happening in Kigali, Rwanda. Kigali. OK, yeah, that's a big one. I mean, it's one thing to talk about these ideas, these like, you know, challenges and potential solutions. But events like this, that's where it gets real. Totally. It's where the rubber meets the road. Yeah. Exactly. You've got the leading minds in agriculture all coming together, sharing their latest research, policymakers who can actually make things happen. And then, of course, you've got the investors, those with the resources to really scale up these solutions. And remember how the AFS Forum emphasizes the importance of investment. Right. Right. These kinds of events are prime for making those connections, for getting those funds flowing in the right direction. For sure. And for those of us who can't just hop on a plane to Kigali, 
There's another event happening in Barcelona, the Sustainable Agriculture and Food Systems Congress, SFS 2024. SFS, yeah, I've heard of that one. It's huge. It is, and they've got this hybrid option so you can attend virtually from, well, anywhere in the world, really. Oh, that's cool. More accessible. I like that. It speaks to this growing awareness, this global desire to be a part of the solution. It's not just an African issue, right? Right. 100%. We're all in this together. And just browsing through the CSS website, some of these session topics are, I mean, they're mind-blowing. Drones for precision agriculture. Seaweed farming is a sustainable food source. There's even a whole track on urban agriculture, bringing food production right to the heart of our cities. It's incredible, isn't it? It feels like the future of food is being like reimagined right before our eyes. It's exciting. It really is. Yeah. And, you know, it kind of brings us full circle to what we talked about at the beginning. The challenges facing food security in Africa, they're real, no doubt about it. But what's been so inspiring is seeing this incredible wave of innovation, this spirit of collaboration. And, yeah, the investment that's starting to flow in. It feels like the world is finally waking up to the potential of African agriculture. It's not just about, you know, averting disaster. It's about building a more sustainable and equitable food future for everyone. I completely agree. It's about recognizing that potential, like you said, and then taking action. And yeah. maybe, just maybe, it's not so far-fetched to imagine a future where Africa isn't just feeding itself, but is actually helping to feed the world. What a powerful thought. That's a future I can get behind. Me too. Well, on that note, I think we've done our deep dive for the day. A huge thank you to everyone for listening in. And until next time, stay curious. Well, 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 my disillusioned dirt diplomats and cynical seed cyborgs, we've somehow stumbled to the end of this trippy trek through tomorrow's techno farms. Feel like your brain just got cross-pollinated with a supercomputer? Yeah, welcome to the club. We meet every Tuesday in the virtual reality cornfield. So, what's the verdict? Ready to trade your succulents for a submarine seaweed farm? Maybe you're eyeing that empty pizza box, wondering if it's time to start your own cardboard cucumber empire. Or perhaps you're considering a career pivot to become a drone whisperer, because apparently that's a thing now. If this episode planted some existential seeds in the barren wasteland of your mind, don't hoard that cognitive compost. Share it with your Luddite cousin who thinks cloud seeding is about knitting sweaters for cumulus. Or that one friend who's still trying to grow basil in their dark, damp basement. Spoiler, it's not basil. Remember, every agricultural revolution started with someone asking why the hell not. So keep questioning, keep exploring, and maybe you'll stumble upon the next big thing in farming. Just don't name it after me. I've got enough identity issues without a strain of GMO corn bearing my name. Until next time, stay curious, stay skeptical, and for the love of whatever deity manages the weather these days, don't forget to recycle your hydroponic nutrient containers. This is Theodore signing off from the crossroads of photosynthesis and existential crisis. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a heated debate scheduled with my AI-powered fridge about the ethics of expired oat milk. It's the only relationship where I'm truly outmatched intellectually. <laughs> Wow, wow, wow,